the days we are in as a church, as the body of Christ, not only TSC, when you go all around, maybe you will listen. Hallelujah. And you will find in one way or the other, anything, everything is connected to the glory of God. And one thing that we know as a church, He's a God of love. So my God be unto you who exactly He is, the unfailing God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God that Jesus died. He came to redeem us back to God. Hallelujah. Whatsoever that we had lost now in Christ Jesus, we have received back. And that is why the Bible says, Greater love has no man than this, than he to lay down his life up for his friends. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Uh, last week we started, we read, we went through uh, the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 10, uh, and we deeply went into a uh, study in verse 29. And then we also went in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we came to realize that everyone has to partake of the communion. Hallelujah. He says, do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Praise the Lord. And we saw that why did they tell, the, why uh, as many interpret the scripture and they say that we are not worthy to take of communion. But what was the scripture saying? That you should not take the communion in what? In, in what? Why you should not take communion in a way that is not what? You should not take communion in a way that is not what? Worthy. It's not that you are not worthy. But we came from, the, from verse 20. And where did the problem come from? Every time they come to break communion, the other person, the other person wants to do what? They have come to satisfy their what? Their hunger. And Paul was telling them, you are doing it the wrong way. And they believe we are able to do justice to that. And we continue uh, to go through that on our uh, Wednesday uh, service. And please, I want to encourage us to continue our breaking bread. But today I want to take us through the many merits. There are so many. Hallelujah. That as a church, as the body of Christ. And now let me tell us, without the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, without him dying, without him resurrecting, there is no church. Hallelujah. The Bible says if he died and he did not raise from the dead, your faith is what? Your faith is futile. Your faith is futile. If Christ died and he didn't rise from the dead, your faith is futile. But let us go into the scriptures. What are the many things, many things that we have received through our Lord Jesus Christ? Him dying on the cross for us. Him shedding the blood and laying down his body. In Jesus' name. Number one thing that I'm going to start from is in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2. I have so far written 10. But as we go on by the grace of God, maybe the Lord will help us to see more and more. Now, it is through the sacrifice of Christ that we have received liberty to have fellowship with God. Hallelujah. It is through that, how many you're reading the Bible? I, how, how, what have you seen in the book of Leviticus? Have you seen how terrible the law was? The law was terrible. But let us first go into the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 2, we read from verse 11. I'm going to be a little bit quick. At least we can cover like five and then we'll cover others as we go on. Ephesians. So the blood has given us the blood has restored our relationship back. We have been reconciled back to God. Hallelujah. We have done what? We have been reconciled back to God in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to read from verse 11. The Bible says that therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. It says in verse 12, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. You were strangers from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. In other words, our relationship with Israel, it had been cut off. But when Christ died at the cross, it was restored back. Hallelujah. 
now we are partakers of the commonwealth of israel we are no longer strangers to the covenants of promise no we are now partakers we have also received of the same he says having no hope and without god in the world we had no hope those who have not come to the lord they are living in this world but let me tell you they are hopeless what has brought back the hope of eternal life in other words the hope of what the hope of eternity is that we have accepted christ as our personal lord and savior so without christ there is no eternity so it says in verse 13 but now in christ jesus you who once we are far off have been brought near by the blood you who once we are far off you were dead i told us some, some something on wednesday that you can be dead but still living you can be dead but still living as long as you are not spiritually recognized you are dead there are many churches they are not recognized in the spirit they are dead there are many believers there are many people also there they are not recognized you are you are spiritually you you you, you have become sluggish but you can revive your spirit revive revive the word prayer and fasting hallelujah prayer and what prayer and fasting go pray and fast the bible says says that many return back to their vomit but that will not be our portion in Jesus' name because people say that once born again born again forever so let's not count the sacrifice of the lamb the sacrifice of christ as a common thing no the blood of jesus is not common and so let us not commonize it no we must attach value to it because of what it has done you can see we are far off we are far away from god but the bible says we once we are far away have been brought back we have been drawn close to god by the blood now i will skip and read verse 19 but in your time you can read the whole of it verse 19 says verse 19 says now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of what of god through the blood let us go in the book of hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 hebrews 10 and 19 hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 so don't count this sacrifice don't count the blood of jesus christ as a common thing no it is not common the Bible says they have insulted the spirit of grace. The grace that brought salvation to you. If the blood had not been shed, your sins would not have been forgiven. Hebrews 10, 19. Are you there? Hebrews 10, 19. Please open your Bibles. The Lord will help you. Carry your Bibles, carry your notebooks when you're coming to church. 19 says, Therefore, brethren, having what? Boldness to do what? To enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way, which he did what? Which he consecrated for us. Hebrews 10, we're reading verse 19. He says, We have boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh and having a high priest over the house of god lord jesus christ our lord jesus christ says now let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with what with pure water through christ we have access to enter into the holy of holies And when you read in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, chapter 28, verse 35, now Jesus entered for us. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11, and then we go in the book of Exodus. The Bible says, But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, 
with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation he says not with the blood of goats and calves but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all once for all having done what having obtained eternal redemption he entered for us so that we too can enter now in the old testament when you go in the book of exodus chapter 28 every time the high priest goes into the holy of holies he has a chain tied on his foot the moment he enters and things are not well with him, he does not come back but well we don't have anything written in the scripture that one or any of them did not come back so we give thanks to the lord so christ has entered for us Praise Jesus Christ that He is our He is our gate. Maybe if I may use that word, He is our what? He is our gate. He is the way that we go through. So without Him, we can't. Exodus from the Amplified. Kindly give me the Amplified. Exodus twenty-eight thirty-five. So let so many things, so many things, that we have received through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, the perfect sacrifice, for you to be seen holy. You can only be seen as holy through Jesus Christ. You can only be seen as righteous through Jesus Christ. You there? Exodus 28:35 from the Amplified. Exodus 28:35. Exodus 25:38. 28:35. Exodus 28:35. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Lord Jesus Christ, we give you glory. The Bible says from the Amplified, a Bible version, it says, Aaron shall wear the robe when he ministers, and its sound shall be heard when he goes alone into the Holy of Holies. Before the Lord, before the Lord, and when he comes out, lest he dies there. Praise Jesus Christ. Revelation 7.14 Revelation 7.14 Revelation 7.14 And then we go and see something else that is very magnificent. I think this is the best of them all. Revelation chapter 7 verse 14 What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? The Bible says, and they say to him, sir, you know. So he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them wait in the blood of the Lamb. The Bible says in verse 15, therefore they are before the throne of God. Revelation 7, I'm reading from verse 17, 14. He says, therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. The Bible says in 16, They shall neither hunger anymore, nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them, nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hallelujah. Now, the other thing that I would like us to look about is that the priesthood was changed when Christ was sacrificed. Hallelujah. But now, not only that, not only that the priesthood was changed, but there is something I want to bring to your attention. Let us go in the book of Hebrews chapter 7 from verse 12. When Christ died at the cross of Calvary, we are no longer under the uh, under the, the levitical law or that for you to be a priest you must come from the tribe of levi no now all of us me and you have been made kings and priests but now there is something very magnificent about this thing that jesus christ did not only become a priest but he also gave us the ability to be kings and priests Hallelujah. But why? Let us go in the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, we read verse 12. 
Praise Jesus Christ. Hebrews. Hebrews. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 12. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Now, can we read from verse 11? Maybe you can understand from there. The Bible says, Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be a and not be called according to the order of Aaron. Now he says in verse 12, For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change of the law. I'm going to read that again. He says, For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change of the law. Now, if the laws of the land are to change let me use this example if at all if at all i'm not a, polit a, 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 a political person but allow me use this the moment nup comes into power it is going to erase most of the things concerning the nrm government hallelujah when jesus christ came so many things were changed concerning the mosaic law so we are no longer under that priesthood we are under the priesthood of our lord jesus christ and not only that in other words let me tell us something else that i said that i told them on, on friday no matter how powerful the president is their norms and uh, their norms and cultural Help me, cultural statutes whatsoever they are, that he cannot go and change as far as the Buganda kingdom is concerned. Hallelujah. It only takes King Mwenda Mutebi, Okutusa, and Nonozo Wakabaka of Wabuganda. Do you get me? Kabaka can change the norms, he can change the things concerning the Buganda kingdom but president cannot so he is a king a king in his own and then Kabaka is also a king now they are kings but they are not priests now God has not made you only a king because a king and a priest now no matter how no matter all the powers that the president has there are things he cannot come and put in the church he cannot come and say, you know what, from now on, we are not going to allow communion to be taken. Hallelujah. Because that is not his jurisdiction. That is not his jurisdiction. He cannot come and say, church this and this, that will cause war. Why? He is, he, he is coming to operate outside of his jurisdiction but he's a king the things he can do now this is what god has done he has made you a king and a priest there are things you must determine as far as your life is concerned he has given you a right to rule as a king and a priest there's some laws concerning your life that god has given you liberty to change that it is you to change them you are a king, you are a priest. He did not only make you a king, he made you a king and a priest. That there are things you'll go into your life and you say, no, I am the one who is ruling in this place. I am the one who is ruling in this life. When the laws of the land are changed, it means that the priest, the king has been changed. If there are things that are still in our lives, it means that we have not taken our position as kings and as priests so jesus christ did not only become a king but he also made you a king and he has given you authority and power over your life to take charge spiritually so you are a king and a priest so what are those things that govern your life that you say mm -hmm. what are those things that so take your position as a priest. Revelation chapter, Revelation 5, 
10, Revelation 5, 10. So, for the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change of the law. What are the laws that are governing your life? What laws govern your life as a person? Hallelujah. One thing I don't personally believe in, I, I hate sickness, I hate disease. So whichever case it may be, I get rid of it. I pray. If I pray and the headache does not disappear, I take paracetamol. The Bible says by his stripes we were healed. So he has given you a right. He has given you a right. You are a priest. You are a king to dominate as far as your territory is concerned. So you must take charge of your territory. We must take charge of our territory. If certain things are still ruling, it means that we have not stood out of our comfort zones. Some other things are still, are still ruling. There are some things that are still ruling. We have not yet ruled. Our kingship and our priesthood is not yet recognized in the spirit. When it is recognized, the moment Jesus Christ was recognized as a priest by an oath because he did not come out of the lineage of Levi. So he came as an oath from the Father above. The moment he was given the right, now everything submits under the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. At the mention of his name, why? Because he is now the king. He is the great high priest. If you sin, go and settle your case with him. Praise the Lord God Almighty. And so he has given you charge. Take charge of your territory. Take charge of your territory. Tell yourself, no. Nzewange bino tebifuga. Waliwe chukta wanya shigambe. Now, I take charge again. By the blood, say, I hey, take charge again. Take charge. You are a king. You are a priest. He passed it over. Jesus Christ passed it over to you. Revelation. He says, and I've made us kings and priests to God. To do what? To reign on the earth. Until we take our place, church will not reign. Until you take your place, you will not reign. Until you look at certain things and you say, no. You won't reign. I told us until sometimes you are angry in your spirit, you will settle for less. If you are not angry within you, you will settle for what you're not supposed to settle for. Hallelujah. And then, Revelation again, chapter 5, verse 10, the same scripture. The Bible says, we read from verse 8, thank you so much. Revelation. So, the moment priesthood was changed, the laws have changed. So, what is that that is governing your life? Brethren, what is it that is governing your life? I've said this testimony times and times again. Hallelujah. That until you take charge, you say no. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So this and this and this and this, you are not supposed to rule in my domain. Says this is my kingdom. I am a king. I am the priest. I determine what takes place in this life. Stand up and speak to situation. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 5, verse 10. We read from 8, right? Read from 8. It says, Now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders from NKJV fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Another thing I want to encourage us pray. Go into the scriptures and pray. Declare, speak the word of God. 
Every Friday we come here, we worship God. Our prayers go as incense. Our worship as incense to the Lord. He says in verse 9, And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And have made us kings. He has redeemed us. After redeeming us, he says, no, I've not only redeemed you out of your, 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 gener your, your generations, your tribes, your tongues, those things that are still attaching themselves on you, tell them no. Anything that does not agree with the covenant of the Lamb, let it not be part of your life. Any covenants, if you are truly standing in the new covenant of the blood, now you're going to tell yourself anything that does not agree with the covenant of the blood. Some of us have come from certain backgrounds. And that is why he says a thing somewhere also. But let me first read this. He says, he has made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. Let us go in the book of, I believe it is First Peter chapter 1 from verse 19. First Peter, First Peter chapter 1 from verse 19. Now that is why he has redeemed us. He has redeemed us. But let me tell you, certain things can decide to reign. They can still be part of your life when they are not supposed to be. The Bible says whatsoever you permit is what? Whatsoever you lose is what? Whatsoever you bind is what? Is bound. So he says in the book of 1 Peter, saying from verse, 1 Peter chapter 1 from verse 18, he says, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by the, the tradition of your fathers, but you were redeemed with the precious blood of the Lamb. Without blemish and without spot. You have been redeemed from the what? From the traditions of your fathers. So take charge as a priest. They are not the traditions of our fathers that are supposed to be ruling our lives. No. We are priests. We are kings. We determine what rules in our lives. But we must take our place. Hallelujah. We must do what? We must take our place. If not... Things can rule when they are not supposed to do what? To rule. They can rule when they are not supposed to rule. Waliwo ebi fuga nga tebi na kola si nga tebi na fuga. So priesthood was changed. Lastly, and then we pray. Lastly, and then we pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We appreciate you, God. We give you glory in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lastly, then we will, I will read this only and then we pray. So number one, we have received continued fellowship with God through the sacrifice of Christ. Number two, we have been given the ability to rule. He became a priest and he also made us a priest. Number three, the covenant, the blood of the Lamb, or the blood and the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, was a seal of the new covenant. So no longer do we stand any, we don't stand under any other covenant. We are no longer under the law. We are no longer under the Mosaic law, but we are under the Messianic life. We are now covenant children. We are not just children. We are children of the new covenant. We are not just children, no. We are children of the new covenant. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let us read Hebrews chapter 9 from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 9. So any other covenant, please let us take charge. Any other covenant? Any other covenant? Some of us were cut when we were young. We, we come from Bakwetok Shandaga. I don't know how they call it. Praise the Lord. 
So some, some things you're like, ah, oh God, why? Because those things, those things, Katujona Diego and he said, no. Now I am a king, I am a priest, I am a born again Christian. I am a child of God. Only what is of the new covenant. If it is not, it cannot stand in my life. Hallelujah. Wali webi jira webi kinebi kwe siva ko. Orusi nono nyane webi yafa nga toko ze chinga toma nyiyo. Na yenga muna nga di kulondo la. The traditions of your fathers. A certain pastor asked a question, I think it was in the book of, was it Deuteronomy? Asking about the sins. Let me take us there. Let me take us there. He was asking about the sins uh, on a certain platform. Uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let me get it clearly. In the book of uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 4 to 6. Exodus chapter 20, verse 4 to 6. So we are part of the new covenant. Ask your neighbor that do you love the Lord Jesus Christ. What God expects back, when someone loves you, what do you do? You love them back. Says we love him because he did what? He first loved us. Exodus chapter 20 verse, verse 4 to 6. The Bible says, Exodus chapter 20 4 to 6. He says, you shall not make for yourselves a carved image. Any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Now, let me tell us, there are things that we do ignorantly and they hinder us spiritually. Don't take yourself back to the Lord. The Bible says that whoever keeps himself under the law, the law brings a what? The law brings a what? A curse. The law brings a curse. So let's go and study the scriptures. The law brings a curse. So it says in verse 5, You shall not bow down to them, <laughs> nor do what? Are you reading the scriptures? Nor do what? Exodus chapter 20, verse 4 to 6, please. He says, you shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord God, I am a what? I am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the what? Of the fathers upon the children, to the what? To the third and fourth generation. Of those who do what? Of those who do what? Of those who do what? Hate me. Now. That is something to note. If you hate God, we are going to visit you generation, generation, generation. Now, that is where the thing is. And he says, for those who love me, I will do what? Verse 6. But show in mercy to south, to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. Now, the difference is that those who hate God, the Bible says, that I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. And there are things that show that you hate God. You have not accepted him as your, as your personal Lord and Savior, as our Lord Jesus Christ. But if those are the things that you are still practicing, then you are, you fall under this. But if you have accepted Christ Jesus as your personal and savior and you continue to stand in the truth, he says that for those who love me, I will show them mercy. There are generations and the generations after. So the difference maker is that others hate and these ones love. So the moment you love God, we cut you off from the other things. The other one that follow them, that they are visiting. So check your love for God and your love and his love for you. These ones who love him, he says they will obtain mercy. I will show them mercy. Thousands and thousands of their generation. But those who hate me, I will visit their iniquities. Now, some of our fathers, they still hate God. They don't want anything to do with sin. They don't want anything. 
And because of that, may God have mercy on us all. That is why go and pray. Pray for your people. Don't only pray for yourself. Pray for your people also. Pray for your people also. Because if they continue not to value in God, it's not God. But you accept him and love him and serve him. Those who hate God, they don't serve him. They worship other gods. They don't have time for him. Someone you love, you must fellowship with him. You must get time to be with him. There are things that test love. Hallelujah. So we are not part of that covenant again. So let's go in the book of Hebrews. So God has cut us off. Hebrews 10, Hebrews 9, 12 to 15. I think I'll read this and on and we pray. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. We'll study others as we go on. Hebrews 9. We read from verse 12. Hebrews 9. We read from verse 12. The Bible says, Hebrews 9, from 12, from 12 to 15, it says, not with the blood of God's and calves, I think I, had, I, had, I read it before, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Now he goes on and says in verse 13, for if by the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of the hive are sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, he says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through eternal redemption, who through the eternal spirit, sorry, offered himself without support to God. He says, cleanse your conscience from the dead work to serve the living God. He says, and for this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant. So stand firm in the new covenant. It cuts you off everything concerning the first covenant. Because it was not perfect. Ah, it was not. The Bible says that those who are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Eternal inheritance. Now, we're going to take some time and pray. Hallelujah. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you're going to thank God. You're going to take charge as a king and as a priest. You're going to stand firm in the, in the second covenant that was sealed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Any other covenant, any other covenants that are not of the Lamb, they're not part of our lives. We have been loved by God. Hallelujah. We have been loved by God. We'll continue by the grace of God. And then the other thing, you want to pray, Father, thank you that I now have fellowship with you in Jesus' mighty and precious name. So let us lift up our voices and we pray. We thank God. Rule. Take charge as a priest. Are there things in your life that are not supposed to be? Tell them no. Now from now onwards, I take charge. Hallelujah. I rule in this place. I rule in my life. I am a king and I am a priest. I determine what happens. I determine the occurrences. Hallelujah. In my life, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for the blood of the Lamb. We thank you for the new covenant. Hallelujah. The Bible says we have been sanctified. So many things. We have not, been, we have, we have, we have not had time to see them all. But let us pray. Tell yourself, I am a king and I am a priest. Everything that I don't give permission to rule, they don't rule in the name of Jesus Christ. Tell God, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. I give you glory. I give you honor. I disagree with everything that is known of you. That the days we are in as a church, as the body of Christ, not only TSC, when you go all around, maybe you will listen. Hallelujah. And you will find in one way or the other, anything, everything is connected to the glory of God. And one thing that we know as a church is a God of love. So my God being unto you who exactly he is, the unfailing God. 